Good morning everyone. Today we're going to try and make an external power pack for my Canon G7X. The little batteries that it uses are quite good. They do last a long time, but I only have two of them and they're super expensive. So the idea is to design and print, 3D print, a replacement battery, which will actually have a cable that comes out and goes to a USB power bank. So we put a 4.2 volt regulator in here, have the wire come out the side. The G7X actually has a notch already for an external power pack because they do sell something like this but it's hard to find in the Philippines and during quarantine it's going to be impossible. So I already took a ruler and measured out pretty much how the battery looks with the notches and everything like that and I got it to fit. I'll show you that. Let's put it in here and because there's a spring inside even if it's one or two millimeters off it doesn't really matter because the spring holds it in place. The biggest mistake is I put the cutout for the wire on the left and it should be over here to come out of this. So we'll just modify that a little bit. I'll show you my print in a moment. Now while I love the performance of this camera I have to say the build quality is awful. These little shutters here they often get stuck and they don't open or close properly. Dust gets inside, goes under the lens, there's no way to clean it out unless you modify it like I have, I had to drill into it. After like a month or two, all the sticky bits that are meant to be like help with your grip, they all started falling off. Uh, this one fell off. On the back here, I had the screws fall out twice, so I had to replace them twice and then put glue over it. So the build quality on this camera is absolutely awful, um, so thank you Canon. But other than that, it's actually a really, really nice camera quality-wise, sensor-wise. So yeah, I'm going to make some adjustments. Let me show you my 3D model of this battery so you can see how I made it. It's a very simple design. So here's my design. I made it on Tinkercad.com, which is like a free editing suite in your browser. It's only good for simple designs really but uh, for this it's fine. So basically I just put shapes, put a box, set the size, then put a cutout and then if we group all this together you'll see that's what it looks like. So we have the cutout there, that's where we're going to put our 4.2 volt regulator. We have our wire coming out here. I think I already modified this from the one that had the mistake. Uh, on the top we have this, I also modified that a little bit, I made it just a couple millimeters shorter. So yeah, it's just made in the browser and uh, you just need a little bit of patience with a ruler and a little bit of I guess a little bit of experience would help with 3D modeling, but you don't have to be that good. So you can see I put the text there, NB13L. We've got the notches here. We've got the pins at the top for the positive and negative. They're also marked, although I'm not sure if you can see on camera. I'm using a cell phone camera right now and the quality isn't great, but uh, everything works. When I was first designing this, I was thinking, how will I make the contacts at the end for positive and negative? And then eventually I came up with this idea, which is quite simple. We just use wires, we push them in and then fold them over. So I've got two tiny little holes. I'm sorry, you probably can't see. Let me see if I can zoom in. You might just be able to see them in there, those two little holes. So that's where the wires go and then they actually get routed internally up to these two contacts. So let's go ahead and do that. Feed through the negative that should come through on the right side. There we go. And then let's feed through the positive. Again, sorry about the quality of this video, but obviously I can't use my main camera because we're working on it right now. So up goes the positive. It should pop out the top. Come on. There we go. And then all we do is pull them down a little bit until just the copper is exposed and then we fold them over. And that's how we get our contacts. And believe it or not, that's actually good enough. That will work. Let's do the same on the positive. And what I do is I just use a knife to stuff these in because I made like a two millimeter divot for the cable to sit in so that once we push it inside the camera, it's flush or it's a little bit recessed by, I don't know, maybe half a millimeter. So now we have our two contacts there and this is the difference of my new design. I put little cutouts that actually go in and then around so that we can fill that with glue or resin and that will act as our strain relief. So if you pull on the cables, it won't just rip them out. 
So there you can see I've added the glue that acts as our strain relief and we can now put this inside the camera. Of course it does fit because I've measured everything very carefully. There's a cutout on the side of the camera already because they do sell an accessory like this but good luck getting that during quarantine. And we can still close the battery compartment and it's ready to be powered externally. Now eventually I want to put a 4.2 volt regulator inside the dummy battery so that we can run this directly from USB. But for now, since I don't have that voltage regulator, we're going to use an adjustable power supply like this. Now, I'm sorry about the flicker of the power supply, but we'll set it to 4.3 volts. Turn it on, and there you go. Oops, it wants me to set the time and date, but our camera is working. It should throw up an error very soon about the uh, Canon logo, about it not being a genuine battery. Ah, interesting, it's not doing this this time. Normally it asks me, are you sure this is a genuine battery? I say no, it says, are you sure you want to continue? I say yes, and it's okay. But there you go, we're powering it from an external power supply, and uh, we can record for as long as we want. Pretty cool, huh? Using a dummy battery that I 3D printed. I actually went through a few different designs. This is just a handful. There were actually some others that I made along the way. This is probably more like what the final one will look like. So we have space inside for a little voltage regulator and then a USB cable coming out. But uh, for now, we'll use this one and we'll power it from our little display here. Pretty cool, huh? And that's all it is. 3D printed battery, some terminals made with bent wires and uh, it works so I'm quite happy with that. I haven't been 3D printing for a long time until recently when I started printing the ear savers for the medical frontliners and then in between that I thought you know what I would really like to find a solution for my camera and uh, I came up with this.